Um, I don't want to repeat what Ron said, but the first thing I do intend to say is that um, the People's Charter is formed on the basis of opposition to all the cuts. Not for less cuts, not for slower cuts, but for no cuts. And why is that? The first reason, I think, is that uh, we have to ask the question, are public servants actually spending their time providing services that nobody needs? And the answer to that is obviously no, they're not. The services that are being provided are absolutely vital. We all know that in every sector they're understaffed, that we need better services, we need more people doing them. That's the actual situation. So why should we accept that cuts have to be made? And the usual reason given by the government, based on advice from the Bank of England, is that uh, we have to protect Britain's credit rating. And there's some uh, body, in, uh, presumably based in, uh, in New York, of uh, bankers from around the world and um, the, some of the ri richest people in the world, um, who formed this committee that decides on the credit rating of countries. Were they elected by anybody? No. Why should we do what they say? Because they, they can direct money um, around the world to places that are following their dictates and away from places that aren't. And I think, I, I would say, as, as Ron said, that the key to this question is who controls the banks? Not just who owns the banks, but who owns and controls the banks. It is up to us to take the banks into national ownership, control them and use the money that's in them for the purposes of improving the services in the country, of regenerating the economy in the country. I mean, the third reason why I think we should, we should oppose the cuts is if, if you look at the question of will they work? And that again is quite clear if you look at Ireland or Greece where they've followed these policies that actually they don't work. And they left, the lesson of the 1930s is there before us as well where they followed these policies of trying to um, cut the deficit by slashing jobs and, and spending on public services. It doesn't work. They'll end up like Ireland after two years of that sort of policy, finding they've got a worse deficit than they had in the first place. The only way, and, 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 and I mean, I'm not a, a lone loony left winger saying this, you've only got to look at uh, economists like Paul Krugman or even George Soros uh, and what they're, they're now writing. They're saying the same thing that actually the only way out of the recession on a worldwide level is to reflate the economy. The government sort of says that we can. Uh, cut the public sector and the private sector will take up the slack. But when you consider that every government in Europe is following the same policy of slashing public services and, and, and deflation, there is no possibility that we're going to be able to have an export-led boom. I work in the construction industry and I can tell you in the last three months in Birmingham, every uh, construction design firm has been slashing its, its workforce very often closing whole departments that are related to uh, construction. And if that happens in the design offices in you know, one month, in three months' time that will be happening on the sites, and in another three months it will be going right throughout the whole economy. So these sort of things, people who think that that is going to solve the crisis are really living in a dreamland. But, um, right, that, that's really all I want to say about the sort of situation with um, our attitude to the cuts, but I think um, in terms of the organisation against the cuts, I should say something. I mean, the really important thing is that people who are in, involved in the, in, in the areas that are being cut start to struggle against it. That is the key. It doesn't matter how many organisations you've got that are opposed to the cuts. Unless the actual people involved and the communities involved start to fight back, we're not going to make a real difference. But having said that, it doesn't help if there are huge divisions among the left of the organisations that are fighting the cuts. And I was certainly very sad at the national level to see that uh, as soon as the Coalition of Resistance called the National Conference for Unity Against the Cuts, two other unity conferences against the national cuts were immediately established by other organisations on the left. Um, I don't think that's helpful. I don't want to see that happen in Birmingham. I mean, I've worked for several years, as you know, to try and build up unity of the public services in Birmingham. First through the public sector committee that was set up by the Trade Union Council, and 
After the People's Charter was established, we decided we needed a wider organisation that could involve community organisations as well, so we set that up <coughs> and worked through that. Um, recently, we've seen the establishment of a Right to Work campaign in Birmingham. Now, I would like to see a united campaign against the cuts, and I think the correct basis for a united campaign against the cuts is opposition to the cuts alone. People's Charter has a much broader programme than that, but we want to unite, uh, even with people who uh, still have a few of lesser cuts or slower cuts. We want them to unite with us against the particular cuts that are affecting our city. So I am for a broad campaign, and I want to see it organised on a collective basis, involving the Trade Union Council, involving the existing organisations and the major unions in the city. I don't think one can jump the gun to establishing it without going through the channels, <coughs> trying to get agreement and um, cooperation from the parties involved. So, so that is what I would like to see, and I hope that is what is going to come out of <coughs> current discussions among us all, that we will end up with a united campaign against the cuts in Birmingham that everyone can support.